thank everybody for coming out um, to the presentation of Design 3 by Noesis Interactive and the Warden of Raw by Columbia College Chicago. So just a quick clarification on terms on Design 3 and Noesis Interactive. Um, Noesis Interactive is the authorized Unity training partner and content developer for game development training. So we have award-winning courseware that is now housed on our service, Design 3. So Design 3 is a game development portal where we have housed our learning material and coupled it with a community area. So we, as mentioned with Noesis, we suit a variety of needs on our customer base. We have consumers, we have the academic realm, and we do a bit of corporate training as well. So on Design 3, we've implemented that wide customer base into the flexibility of how we brought our courseware onto the site. So within our courseware, we have it just labeled by software, by topic. If you're looking to just go in, I'm looking for Unity, I'm looking for Unreal, get into your topics of what you're looking that way. And we also have it as prepackaged courses for academics. So we have course catered material, outlines, um, interactive links within those outlines, assessment questions, kind of by topic breakdown of what you're going to learn in those classes. And we're going to be rolling out an academic portal post GDC where you guys can go in and have a space to create your own custom courseware in there. So it'll have be kind of a uh, customized playlist kind of thing where you can search by topic, by level, and then integrate that into a customized playlist that you can export for your class to use. As mentioned for the corporate training, sometimes you are just sitting there developing late at night, you're the last one at the studio. We have also metadata, descriptions, tagged, all our stuff so that if you are sitting the last one in the studio, nobody to talk to, I'm struggling with, say, particle systems. You can then search all related videos to particle systems will pop up and you can get help to whatever your specific topic is right there. So for anybody interested, we do have discounts for the corporate level and the academics as well. We're happy to work with you on our prepackaged courses, give it to you as a resource in the library or outside discounts for students, or work with you on your existing classes. So if you guys have syllabuses you want to send to us, we're happy to recommend how our videos would suit your guys' existing courses as well. So a project that was done using the benefit of Design 3 is Tom Dowd here for Columbia College Chicago. He had a 29 uh, student team that created a pretty fantastic game that I would like to turn him over and uh, let you guys see what Design 3 can help your guys' school do. Uh, I want to thank Joel and Noesis for the opportunity to come over here today and to uh, talk to you a little bit about our, our program and uh, what we're doing and how we were able to make use of the Noesis courseware. Uh, so first, let me give you kind of an introduction to who we are as an institution and what our program is like so you can kind of put it in the right context. Um, Columbia College Chicago is an urban campus. Uh, we are located in the heart of downtown Chicago. Uh, we're spread out over a number of uh, buildings uh, right, near, um, <laughs> right near Grand Park. Uh, so when we say urban, we really mean it. Um, we're a visual performing and communications media school. Um, there's about 12,000 students these days. Um, so we're fairly sizable, and we are an arts college. That is really what our focus is. Um, 120 academic programs, ours is one of them. Uh, we're housed within the School of Media Arts, which also includes television and film and video, audio arts and acoustics, uh, arts and entertainment marketing, so on and so forth. Um, specifically, we're in the Interactive Arts and Media Department. Uh, the game major is a Bachelor of Arts. It's a four-year Bachelor of Arts degree. Um, there are other degrees in the major, uh, excuse me, in the department, uh, interactive arts and media, which is more web and interactivity based. Uh, the game major is relatively new, however. Uh, something to point out is uh, a new facility that Columbia built about a year and a half ago called the Media Production Center. It's a multi-departmental center, uh, shared mostly within the School of Media Arts, but within others. Um, it's got giant shooting stages, um, the largest academic stages in the Midwest. Um, you can see some p images there. Uh, we also have a 2,000 square foot motion capture facility that uses state-of-the-art motion analysis Hawk systems. And our students have access to all of that equipment and all of that facility for their project as they wish. We also have within our department a, uh, we're not a research institution, but our department does do a great deal of research with 
uh, the government, specifically with DARPA. Right now, they're doing some work on um, interpretive communication analysis, where they basically will wire up a room and, and multiple people communicating in various ways and uh, try and interpret what's going on between them dynamically um, so that they can do leadership training, so on and so forth. Uh, it got ahead of me, but that's okay. Uh, last summer, we did a really nice um, event called the 3G Girls Games and Gender Summit where we brought in a number of professional uh, video game developers who were women, people like Tracy Fullerton and Mary Flanagan and uh, Aaron Robinson and um, Suana Ruiz and Jennifer Jensen. And we also brought in 50 girls from the uh, local Chicago area to specifically train them, and not train them, but to expose them to the game design process and to kind of open their eyes to the technology options and the creative options. Um, and we're fortunate in that, this is a group shot of all of them, uh, but we're fortunate in that one of the, the results of that um, will be available on the iTunes store uh, in a couple of months by the, the, a gracious donation from a local iPhone developer who heard about what we were doing, saw one of the girls' projects, and decided they wanted to make it a reality other than just kind of a design. Uh, as I said, we started in 2006. We're graduating our third uh, class uh, this coming May. We break down into four concentrations, art and animation, design and development, programming and sound and music. Uh, right now, we're focused on, well, there's about 200 students in the class, but we do focus on a very interdisciplinary, collaborative environment. Uh, a big plus in our department is that the students who are all, the seniors, all work together on one team project in their final year over the course of that year. So the project that we're going to look at in a second, Ward Navral, as Joel mentioned, was made by 29 students, um, some programmers, some artists, some sound, and some game designers, uh, who all, all had to come together and make this happen. So this is Ward Navral, as I said. Uh, the big thing is that it was pitched, designed, and built by the students, meaning they came up with the ideas, they had to pitch it to each other, they had to sell it to everybody who was in the, in the graduating class, and the team decided what they were going to make. So this is a completely st student-driven project. Myself and the other faculty members just kind of stand back and, and watch it happen and put the bumpers up and guide them as they go along, but the big thing is for them to really understand and experience how this is going to work. Key to that, though, is to make sure that they don't encounter any unnecessary frustrations with the tools that they're using, right? Because we want them to be creative, we want them to experience the process, and when they experience these kind of tool-based stumbling blocks, it gets, it, it interferes. Now it's good to be part of their problem-solving methodology and to come up with solutions and to figure out how this stuff works, but, this, but we don't want them starting cold and starting from absolutely nothing. Um, an interesting thing about this project is it originally started in another game engine. And about three weeks into the semester, the students came to me and said, hey, Unity 3D just came out. It looks really awesome. Can we switch to that? And I said, well, OK, you know, you're, you're three weeks into the semester. We've been training you on this other engine. Is that what you really want to do? I had them do a risk analysis, comparing the old engine to the new engine, what they were giving up, what they were, what they were going to be gaining. Um, and one of the factors in their evaluation was the Design 3 material that they were aware of and basically said, this stuff exists, we can use that to get up to speed. Um, they made a great case for it, we agreed to let them make the change and said, but if we make this change, this is your change, dudes, this is it, you're, you're living with this, right? And they said, no, no, it'll be good, it'll be good. And in fact, within a week, they had reproduced all of the work they had done in the first three weeks in the other engine. So they got themselves up to speed really, really fast. And we'll talk about that in a second. So let me. Cross your fingers. There we go. Let's take a quick look at the game. So we do all of our character animation modeling work in Maya. Um, as I said, we have a motion capture studio, but this particular class decided to keyframe everything because of the nature of the animation and the work that they were doing. Um, but otherwise, they would use Motion Builder and Cortex as part of their workflow. Um, you can see different versions of the character, different animation states all for the main character. But because of the interesting uh, physiology of the main character, they didn't think that mocap would be the best solution. 
There he is all splayed out in his glory, his various texture maps. Very exciting. This is a sample and examples of the art style that's being used in the game. They were trying to work for this kind of pre-Columbian, but not quite right style. The concept of the game is that your main character is the lone guardian of this ancient temple, and there are um, tomb robbers coming in to try and steal things, and he has to prevent them, but he has to do so by placing traps and distracting them and leading them away from the treasures rather than confronting them directly. This is an art mock-up that was done in Unity uh, to prove the art style. Um, so it was done by the artists just to show that this is how it was all going to work and we could see how the shaders were going to play and, and to get a good sense of it. This is the game itself. They had a first playable build last Friday, just before coming here. So they had that wonderful pre-GDC milestone rush. Um, and you can see it's, it's, it's still early, but it's starting to come together. There are some scale issues that they're going to start working through as the stuff comes in. And you can see a little bit of uh, gameplay. The big yellow guys will be the intruders who are chasing him down. But the AI is pathfinding. It's doing everything that it's supposed to be doing. And we're now starting to weave the assets in and to test the gameplay. So that's the basics of the game. Um, as I said, they, petit they petitioned to use Unity 3D with the release of Unity 3.0. Uh, we agreed. Um, in part because of the Design 3 resources that were available. Uh, we immediately made use of those resources um, and through the subscription policy that they have, the students were able to subscribe to all of the coursework on the site, regardless of whether it was Unity or Maya or anything like that, stream it to their, to the, to their desktop at school, stream it to their desktop at home, however they wanted, they had access 24-7 to it. So they were able to just to run themselves through all the tutorials that were available and get them up to speed on the engine really in record time. I was kind of shocked at how quick they were able to do it. I'm not gonna lie. I knew that the stuff was nice, but they they ripped it out. And frankly, they're ahead of the uh, ahead of the curve because they were able to get to get it up. And now it exists as a resource for them. They go back to that training stuff periodically, even though they've gone through it before, and bring it up and look at it and say, yeah, see, this is how this works, this is how we do it. And moving forward. The, no, the, the Design 3 stuff is going to work for us in, instead of a textbook. So where we had previously had our students purchase paper textbooks, we're now just going to tell them to subscribe to the Design 3 material for hours long, however long they want uh, and make use of that in conjunction with what we're teaching them in class. We're also using it to bring our faculty and staff up to speed on, on the Unity engine um, and they've been making great use of it. So. Frankly, it, it, it works, and it has been working great for us, and it's, it holds a great deal of responsibility for where we were able to get with this project as quickly as we, as we could. I've got some students in the back there, and I can see some of them nodding uh, as I'm talking about this because they're the ones who dug in and they're the ones who made use of it. Um, so that's, that's the basics of our situation. Yeah. Yeah, so again, a big thank you to Tom and all the students at Columbia, Chicago. We're really proud of what you guys did, and we're happy to show it off. Um, that's, that's a big part of what we're excited about with Design 3, is allowing you guys resources to exercise that creativity. And that's really big for us. To see these projects come back in such polished fashion, that's really exciting for us. And just two points that Tom mentioned that I really wanted to just push forward is that the two philosophies on what we base our training on is tool teaching and production pipeline. So that is a big thing for the academic setting is version control, all these newest softwares that come out will be handling the training for that and you guys can take those tools and have that learning done outside of class. Class time can be concepts, theory, not this button does this. Students can learn that at their own speed with these resources outside of the class. And the production pipeline is important because we want to harbor students with their specific expertise, but we also want them educated on what the whole process is. So that's going to increase their ability to be hired outside of school. When they're coming into a studio, they're going to have less ramp up time because they understand, I know how to make my art, but I also know how it fits into the whole grand scheme of things. So if you guys are looking for any more information on Design 3 or Word of Roll, we'll be here for questions. Feel free to stop by our booth for some free trials and things like that. And uh, please get in touch because we'd love to help you make some projects. So thank you guys.